All right, folks, sorry about the audio and uh, video quality, but I'm just going to run you really quick through an idea that's been helping me uh, recently a lot. Um, so generally, this there's this idea of like, you know, what scale do I play over what chord? And, you know, especially with certain extensions, you know, what, what kind of, what do I play over? For example, what I'm going to talk about today is going to be a dominant nine with a 13. So like, what scale do I play over that? Now, you could just Google that. Um or, you know, find some resource that says, like, play this scale, or, like, here are your scale options. But I think it's really interesting um, for a lot of reasons to kind of practice using your own ear to sort of find these scales. Now, I will say the default answer to that question of, like, what do I play over a dominant 913 chord is going to be Mixolydian. You play the, the root in Mixolydian mode. So, for example, here's a C-sharp uh, 913. Uh, so I'm sorry, a C dominant seven, C sharp dominant seven with a nine and a thirteen. So I've got my typical dominant seven shell voicing with a nine. So that D sharp, and then a uh, six. So in this case, so that's gonna be an A sharp, right? Um, so again, my shape for anyone interested in following along with uh, fourths tuning, and of course you can adapt this to your own tuning, is going to be I'm barring the fourth, uh, the third fret, and then I'm adding two more fingers. And I know you can't see me super well over here, but uh, I'm barring. You shouldn't, you shouldn't really worry about what shape I'm playing. You should figure out what chord voicing works for you, and thinking about things in terms of intervals and stuff. So I don't want you thinking about like what frets am I playing, but just for informational purposes, I guess, um, I'm barring that third fret, and then I'm adding these two fingers, one on the fourth fret to cover that C sharp, that's my root, so that's my second finger playing the root, and then another finger on the minor seventh um, playing that B. So that's my, that's my shape, and then the bar on the third fret gives me the nine for free, so two fingers, or three fingers, I should say, got me covered there. And then the 13 is for me is going to be the fifth fret. That's going to be the, uh, the A sharp for that six. Uh, and overall, if you care about the frets that I'm playing, again, in force tuning, uh, E, A, D, G, C, F, I'm playing from the A string up. I'm playing A, I'm sorry, uh, uh, four, three, four, three, five. Um, so the idea is what, what scale do I play over that? So what I did this morning it's kind of my practice routine for the day, uh, was I just took the chord itself without the extension. So if I'm interested in the 13, that's kind of where I'm focused today. Uh, I'm going to play the chord without the 13, without that extension that I'm kind of thinking about. And then I'm going to play around with that. I'm going to freeze that chord, uh, the, the original chord. So in this case, the, the dominant with a nine, the dominant nine chord. And I'm just going to play around with it using my ear and I'm just gonna focus on the 13 as sort of my starting note for like a line or an idea and kind of play scalar ideas over that until I get find something that I'm comfortable with. Um, now I've been playing on this kind of all day on and off, so my ear is already very comfortable with the sound that I'm going for here, but when I first started doing this uh, this morning, I was hitting wrong note after wrong note, like, oh, I don't like that idea. I tried some melodic minory type shapes and I just wasn't finding anything. And eventually I just sort of used my ear to find the notes I like and I played this pattern and built it up and now it's sort of like baked into my ear for the day and um, it ended up being just a straight mixility and off of the C sharp. Um, so again, I'm going to play this C sharp dominant nine, freeze it, and then mess with ideas starting on the 13. So I'm just going to hit that note, and kind of feel it out. Okay, so again, now I've got a C sharp dominant ninth chord ringing out. Thank you. 
So now another cool thing is that I've started to hear, for some reason, the D sharp as the root. So the nine I'm starting to hear is kind of the root of whatever's going on here. And I don't know if you noticed, but I started playing sort of a D sharp minor pentatonic shape. So by doing this and finding notes um, that you can sort of build familiar ideas off of, you can start to associate these pentatonics naturally, not by looking up a list and going, oh, this guy says, you know, you could use the flat third, like, with a pentatonic shape, and it should be fine, and that will evoke a mixed, you know, a melodic minor feel or something. Like, that stuff is cool and useful, but I feel like I've, I've read it a million times, I've seen people say it a million times, and it never kind of bakes into my playing until I sit down by myself and, like, work that out and find that shape by myself. So... By doing this today as an exercise, I found two pentatonic shapes that I'm digging over this, this chord. So again, we're playing a C sharp dominant nine with a 13, so C sharp nine 13. And the default sort of scale that I'm hearing over it is this Mixolydian mode. And I'm really digging that D sharp as a root in this context for some reason. And so playing that, just playing D-sharp melodic, I'm sorry, uh, minor pentatonic. Uh, which makes a lot of sense because the five chord is going to be a dominant chord in, in, in a major scale and the six chord is going to be the natural minor scale. So it makes sense that the kind of where I'm hearing this is in like a D minor -y sort of context. You can tell I'm, I'm sort of playing it by ear over intervals and not thinking about a scale shape because I just hit a wrong note. So anyways, I think it's, it's a great exercise. And again, by doing this, I've found also I've found that there's actually a minor pentatonic on the 13 itself. So in this case on the A sharp. Right, now I've, I've sort of got these baked into my brain at this point. It's not something some random guy on the internet told me, which I guess is ironic given that I'm a random guy that's telling you this. Um, but I'm trying to show you the process that you could use to find these for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Don't remember that I said, use this shape, use these frets, use these intervals, whatever, like, figure out a chord that you're interested in, even if that's very simple, like a major triad. So let's say you're messing around with triads, right? And you're doing some real basic stuff, maybe E minor, that's what I accidentally played, so. You could freeze that. And then you just mess around over it. So so I actually am being drawn to that major seventh for whatever reason, just by my ear. I don't know, so some combination of E natural minor in this case, and maybe like an A harmonic minor um, sort of thing. So maybe maybe a E Phrygian dominant would work. I just, I just kind of happen to know that the fourth mode of the A harmonic minor scale is gonna be E 
uh, Phrygian dominant, and so now I can mess around with that idea. And from that, um, we obviously, the E pentatonic uh, minor is going to work great. And you could, I'll mess around with the A, maybe the A will work. I didn't like the A, I don't know if you noticed, but I did end up finding this F sharp minor pentatonic. And again, I'm not too worried that you can't see my hand here because you shouldn't be thinking about what frets or shapes I'm playing. You should be trying to use your ear to find the shapes you're already familiar with that you can kind of correlate with a certain sound. And, and right there, that whole whatever I just played, uh, I have no idea what scale it was, what idea it was. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it was like mostly E natural minor if I had to guess, but um, I didn't think about scales once. I didn't think about patterns once. I just sort of was playing scalar ideas, meaning I was going like, I was just figuring out where I was by ear and figuring out where I wanted to go from there, so. So uh, yeah, hopefully that gives you some ideas. Maybe take some chords and freeze them. Uh, for for what it's worth, I would really recommend figuring out a way to very quickly freeze chord ideas. Um, some things I've done in the past. Uh, for, right now, I've got a quad cortex with just that just has like a freeze utility on it, and that's wonderful. Things like the Helix have those as well. Uh, maybe some of the Boss stuff will have will have things like that. Um, so if you've got a multiprocessor that does anything, um, maybe dig into that and see if it's got something like that. Even if it's got a looper or if you have a looper, use something like that. Um, I'll often open up Ableton and throw up a VST, you know, throw some MIDI on it. Uh, you can either just like punch things in via piano roll, do like a big pad sound. A lot of people tend to do things like this. Um, or you could use a synth, whether it be through MIDI or through an actual synthesizer. Um, Use something like an ARP or a latch if you have to, but anything that you can do, maybe even look up a, a chord vamp track. So a vamp just being something where someone just plays kind of the same thing. Like if I was doing an A minor seven vamp, I might do something like. Right? So you might be able to find a one chord or even like a one note drone or something. Just find something to kind of set the mood. I tend to think about these scales and modes and all that stuff in terms of moods. Um, and in my opinion, if you, if you look at what I was playing towards the beginning, you can find evidence that you can play very simple standard scales and modes and stuff. Maybe things that you kind of take for granted. Um, and you can evoke very beautiful sort of sh like strange sounds that you might think otherwise would require some fancy scale. Like, oh, I need to go l learn the 85th mode of the harmonic major flat 9, flat 7, flat 13, sharp 15 to be able to play something that sounds nice. But in my opinion, just taking this, you know, basic dominant chord, adding some extensions... <laughs> Thank you. 
yeah so you can see i made like eight mistakes there but uh and at the end i was messing with some augmented triad stuff definitely look into augmented triads if you are interested in theory stuff and new sounds and whatnot uh fun fact the augmented triad is the one triad that's not available naturally within a uh, uh, major scale or any of its modes. Uh, so like the interesting thing about the uh, harmonic minor, it has a, a augmented triad in it. The melodic minor has two augmented triads in it. And I'm probably missing stuff, right? Because I'm still in the middle of my sort of uh, learning phase with a lot of this stuff and probably will be for years. So um, yeah. Hopefully this gives you some idea of, you know, some little tricks that you can do to kind of work with your own ear and the shapes and ideas you already have to kind of find some new stuff. And it doesn't have to be something sort of complicated. If, if you feel like this sharp 913 thing is like, oh man, that's a lot of, that's a lot of stuff. Um, don't worry about doing complicated chords, you know, go do whatever it is that you already are familiar with and use that as an opportunity to learn some new sounds, whether that be a simple triad or even just a power chord, right? Like whatever. All right, have a good day.